I loved watching last night as the Denver Nuggets, for the first time in their history, okay, for the first time in their history, become NBA champions. And, and I find it to be really fascinating to watch so many fall all over themselves to try and kind of explain away, well, why they got it wrong or why they didn't, why they didn't vote for Jokic to be MVP or we do know that there was a remake of white man can't jump, right? It's on Hulu. Has anybody watched that movie? Does anybody know if it's any good? I've heard it's awful and I didn't watch it. No. Okay. It's fine. That movie can be awful, but the idea behind the movie is a really good one because if you're white and you play basketball on some level, you've experienced what Billy Hoyle experiences there. You remember in the original white man can't jump, right? The original white man can't jump. In the opening scene, they're playing in Venice Beach, California. And Billy somehow gets into the game as one of the guys gets hurt, right? Gets hurt and he hops in. Then he wins the game. Then he and Wesley Snipes are going to shoot for money. And in the midst of, I believe it was like, what? The best out of 10 or the best out of five shots? I think it was best out of five. Shooting for cash. At some point, Woody Harrelson, who plays Billy Hoyle, turns and says, you know, when when I walked up here, what did you think? I'm a dork. I'm a geek. I'm a loser. Right? He stretches different. He dresses different. He's got a tie-dye hat turned backwards. He just looks different than what you think a hooper would be. Does that feel anything like what you saw from Jokic? Yes, some of the ways in which he jumps off of one foot are unorthodox. Who does that remind you of? A little bit of a dirk? Right? And he slings the ball around and he handles the ball and he flails around and you're like, wow, that's a really, it's just, I don't know what it is. But where we all get lost is we think that because basketball players, and I would generally agree with this premise that basketball players are usually the best all-around athletes. Now, like most basketball players couldn't be left tackles, okay? And it's hard to hit a baseball. But athletically, they can survive somewhere in a football field, somewhere in a baseball field. There is a a definite amount of refined skill. But in athletic endeavors, I would tell you that I think basketball players, because one, you have to use a ball, you have to use an object. Two, there are other players, you have to play offense and defense. There's physicality to it, speed, quickness, endurance. Like it hits everything, right? You have to have hand-eye coordination. You don't have to have hand-eye coordination if you're a defensive lineman. You just go tackle the quarterback. You have to... It's a reactionary sport, but you also have to process time, score, defense, officiating where I am on the floor, all of these things. It it encapsulates everything that makes a great athlete. So we think automatically that the guy who runs the fastest, jumps the highest, looks the part is the best. And that is not the case. That is not the case. And oh yeah, by the way, in many ways, it's not the case in most sports, even in football, right? If Jerry Rice is the greatest wide receiver of all time, and it's pretty hard to find an argument against that, Jerry Rice wasn't the fastest. Jerry Rice wasn't the biggest. Jerry Rice was the best. It's not just quarterback, okay? But the perfect example of quarterback is the Tom Brady picture when he's drafted. I mean, Tom Brady and Cam Newton. Cam Newton, anybody who takes a a snapshot of Cam Newton working out will go like, I don't know what sport he plays, but that guy looks like a pro athlete. Tom Brady's just a nice looking six foot five white dude. Tom Brady's the best quarterback most of us have ever seen. Definitely the winningest quarterback. And the other guys in that discussion also don't look like Cam Newton. Cam Newton's got a really good career. 
was an MVP, went to a Super Bowl. But being the biggest, strongest, fastest, with a he has a better arm than Tom Brady back before he hurt his shoulder. Not the best. All right? Not the best. I mean, we go sport by sport by sport. And for whatever reason, for whatever reason, our brains work that you have to prove it two or three times more when you're not the greatest athlete. And I don't think it just comes down to race, although race probably plays a factor into it. I don't think it just comes down to the fact you're foreign born, although being foreign born plays a factor into it. Because the truth is that if you check boxers for how you're supposed to act, what you're supposed to do, like that dude fills them all out. I mean, people today are raving about the fact that he shook everybody's hand on the heat. Even one of the cats who wasn't even looking, didn't even want to shake his hand. When he was interviewed after the game, he said, you know, it's about playing for the guy next to us, next to me, me playing for Jamal and Jamal playing for me. Like all of these statements completely get it. Incredibly ideal. It's what you want your sport to be. A guy who like, look, the, the way that sports really work, I truly believe this is no one has all of their senses. Right. And what happens when you lack one of your senses is usually in real life, you make up for it with your other sentence become hypersensitive, hypersensitized. Is that right? Right. Like if you can't smell or if you if you're blind. People who are blind hear at a much clearer, better rate. They smell different, right? It's all of those, th- all those other senses become magnified. And that's, what's ha- that's what happens in athletics. Right? Peyton Manning. When Peyton Manning finished, he was arguably the greatest quarterback ever. Couldn't really run, but he could move in the pocket. Didn't have a great arm, but man, did he know where to put it. I think what we've all learned is layup lines is not a great uh, way to judge who the best players are. Because in layup lines, Aaron Gordon's the greatest player on that floor. And look, I love the Aaron Gordon thing. Did you guys see he was walking around the streets of Denver, still had his game shorts on. That was awesome. Now, of course, there was that crazy shooting. Just thankful that that wasn't anywhere near where Aaron Gordon was. But how cool is that? Like you bust out of the arena, you drink a bunch of champagne. Like, yo, man, you want to get in your car and go to the club? Like, nah, I'm just going to walk around and be a man of the people. That's incredible. There are so many levels and layers to this Nuggets thing, which makes it really cool. Right? You got Mike Malone, who was doing good things in Sacramento. And Sacramento had to choose between DeMarcus Cousins and Mike Malone. And guess who they chose? You have Aaron Gordon, who was a star on a bad team. And now he's the third best player on a great team. And sacrificing that role, sacrificing your ego, where you're never going to be an all-star again, is remarkable. Obviously, you have the Jamal Murray, who, I mean, I, I understand he tore his ACL, we did make it out like he was paralyzed last night. I mean, it was a little like hey, he wasn't even going to he wasn't even walking like he tore his ACL. Lots of dudes tore their ACL. I, I, I get it. But still, Jamal Murray getting back to bubble Jamal Murray was pretty cool. But the biggest story is Jokic and our inability to understand not just a lack of athleticism. But people, if you didn't learn this story. The Kendrick Perkins argument was not just about race. The Kendrick Perkins argument was about how many points he scored. That was his thing. Well, you know, he's not even top 10 in points scored. If you know what you're looking for. If you know what you're looking for. You don't need to to be top 10 in points. You just don't. You can dominate a basketball game without scoring a point. 95% of the time in basketball, you don't have the ball in your hands. So, I think the whole thing is absolutely fascinating that so many people who speak about a sport that they think they know something about clearly don't know anything about. Because the one thing that remains true is, you are who your best player is, that team's best player 
is egoless, is selfless, and plays the game with an amount of joy and a beauty that we've seen, frankly, with the Warriors. That's what it reminds me of. And, and like, look, dude, I'm, I'm connected enough with the basketball community to, and everybody's like, well, you missed on Steph Curry. Of course I did. Lots of people missed on Steph Curry because he wasn't big enough. He wasn't strong enough. He wasn't quick enough. Like my dad's the guy who picked up the phone and called Tony Bennett at Washington State and said, you got to take Clay Thompson. I don't want Clay Thompson. He's soft. He whines. Can't dribble. He's tough and he can make shots. So I, I think we have to collectively change our thinking. And last night gives us a great, uh, great push into the off season where we can recalibrate what a great sports player is, regardless of, of sport. Like Messi's coming over right, to play in the MLS. But like Messi's not the greatest athlete in the history of soccer. Incredibly bright, incredibly tough, obviously remarkable with the ball, creative with his passing. How many sports do we need to see this that we start to understand that, yes, there are tangible things you have to have to be able to compete in your chosen field, right? It is fair to say that if Jokic was 6'2", he couldn't do what he does. And he does have to be able to shoot. He does have to be able to score. But the tallest, fastest, quickest, most athletic, what does that win you? And the more I listen to people talk about the sport that I grew up playing and I spent a lot of time coaching and I spent my entire professional career analyzing, I think the less people, I, the less I respect what people know. Because all you have to do is watch them. And, and look, a fair, a fair way to say is like, look, I just didn't watch. But nobody wants to admit to that. Right? Nobody wants to admit that they didn't read the book. Right? Did you see that documentary? Oh, yeah, I saw it. Remember that part? Oh, that part, yeah. You didn't watch it. Because if you watched Jokic throughout the season, you'd be like, well, that's just what he does. That, like, that, those games look exactly like all the games in the regular season. He just, you look up and he's got a ton of points, a ton of assists, a ton of rebounds, and he does some funky stuff and he kind of waddles around out there and just makes plays. That's Jokic ball. And I, I'm sure it looks different. But man, was it fun. And it, it's a great exposure of people who value athletic, pure athleticism above the actual skill of the player. And I said this last year with Luka. What you're seeing from Jokic, what you saw from Luka, is what Larry Bird did for a decade or so in the NBA. Dominated the NBA with a sort of flair, toughness, skill, and, you know, you get from, again, like I heard it again today where didn't J.J. Redick say Oscar Robertson couldn't play in today's NBA? Somebody said that. Like, why? Explain to me why. Because <laughs> he doesn't jump as high or run as fast. Did you not just watch Jokic? Have you not watched Luka? Have you not watched Steph Curry? I mean, even Michael Jordan and LeBron James, like Michael Jordan at his peak athleticism, struggled to win, had to become more and more skilled as a shooter, had to learn to be a passer. His first NBA finals, people forget the Lakers made other people beat him and they did. He averaged 11 assists a game. All of those other things are more important than can you go dunk on somebody? You have to have a level of athleticism. You have to have an amount of size. You have to have, but you have to have other things that you can't quantify with raw measurements. You got to be tough. You got to be smart. You got to be skilled. And part of being tough and smart and skilled is knowing what you can do and what you can't do. 
That was explained to me when I got to the professional ranks. Hey, man, everybody doesn't think you can shoot. But you know what? You don't have to shoot. Shoot the shots that you can make and not. Don't shoot it. Pros do what they do. Amateurs try and prove everybody wrong. I just blown away, floored by Jokic and how many people he made to look a fool because he was overweight. He's not a great freak athlete, but he's a great freak basketball player who completely and thoroughly dominated. Like, oh, why are they down 10 at the half? Because mm, he was in, or whatever in there, because he was in foul trouble. The Nuggets are champions for the first time ever. And maybe all of us got a lesson that we can take to all sports that show you don't have to be the best pure athlete to be the best player in a given field. 